So the recording will be up on the website and possibly on YouTube channels. Um, I'm going to start my video and before anything else, let me say welcome to the Identity Working Group. And this is the first meeting we have had since April um, due to uh, difficulties in getting presenters and getting the whole thing moving. So before we start, we, we have two items. One is, of course, the antitrust policy of the Linux Foundation. We follow that antitrust policy and um, please read the details in the uh, meeting page. Uh, the other item is the DCI pledge, which is basically all are welcome. Not only are all welcome, but we request that you be, um, you know, not disagreeable to to people when you even when you disagree. So, uh, good debate. Opposing viewpoints are welcome, but not uh, screeching and shouting and cursing, uh, or even um, denigrating people. So with that, I'm going to start my presentation. It has um, been an uh, interesting journey, to say the least, to uh, research this topic. And I am also suggesting something at the end, which may or may not uh, be the solution for uh, getting out of these problems that we are in with respect to the metaverse. So I'm going to start the presentation, uh, um, sharing the screen soon. Um, Okay, I'm trying to find out. Okay, here it is. And I'm going to share the screen. Can you all sh um, see my screen? Yep. Yes. Thanks. That must be crazy, Tracy. Um, so first, we start off with a discussion or a description or let's say an overview of the metaverse itself, and then figure out why identity is one of the most important foundational constructs in this uh, in the metaverse. So we know where we are. I've taken out the agenda because I'm kind of uh, doing it in a very um, sort of ad hoc way. So if you think that Metaverse was invented yesterday or was invented by Zuckerberg, you would be wrong, obviously. But it goes all the way back to the statistical machine, which is uh, similar to the concept of, um, you know, compressing information uh, in a micro dot, which is what uh, Samuel Goldberg invented, and then um, using a machine to search the, uh, the information contained in the micro dot, which can be thought of today's internet and search engines. Then came uh, Vannevar Bush, who, uh, so Samuel Goldberg is probably early 30s, 1930s. Vannevar Bush is slightly later, and his uh, concept of the memex, which everybody has uh, 
heard about, which is basically a way to organize information and to search it. But these were all done before computers were even invented. So they employ analog methods. Then we come to Jean Baudrillard, who come, came up with the concept of hyperreality. Then uh, Jean-Luc Godard's um, Alphaville is an interesting movie, which has, which sh basically shines a light on uh, the metaverse as a bad place, meaning it is a dystopia. And so it are all of the um, literary creations that are in five and six, and you and arguably you can say seven as well. Of course, uh, many of us are gamers. I am not one for the very simple reason that I exhausted my gaming, uh, let's say, urge very early in my career where I played um, some first person shooter games back in the 80s for weeks on end. And then I said, I'm never going to do this again. Maybe the games are uh, much better and much uh, more, uh, much richer, more uh, with m more things to do, but uh, the real world uh, is very interesting to me, so that's why I refrain from gaming too much. Uh, I mean, not even a little bit, really. So, coming back to the three, um, the uh, dystopia, which obviously is the opposite of utopia, where the metaverse Basically, it's a bad construct. But I did read um, Metaverse and how it will revolutionize everything by, um, by Matthew Ball, which is, of course, uh, you know, talks about the Metaverse as a something that has to happen soon and uh, will bring in uh, lots of goodies, lots of productivity and everything else. But of course it is focused highly on gaming. The last item here is Planet Labs. Planet Labs is a, uh, uh, is a imaging a company that has around 200 satellites uh, which are this which are less than 10 or 15 kilograms each launched by isro which is an indian space research organization and also by spacex they map everything on the earth's surface multiple times a day so it's a dynamic uh, data set. And there is a publicly available component of it. And I want to highlight that because if you want, if you want the metaverse to become a, a reality, then we need more public benefit corporations like Planet Labs. You can join Planet Labs and download data from them. Of course, most of the data today is being used uh, for things like climate uh, change, uh, you know, trying to, uh, trying to look at climate change, trying to look at forest fires, trying to look at various other uh, global phenomena. And you can actually get the data set, like I said. Um, so this is a definition of the metaverse from um, 
2013. So before mobile became ubiquitous, before the invention, well, maybe not the invention, but uh, HoloLens and uh, the uh, Facebook, uh, uh, you know, VR headset. It has the basic components of what is needed for the metaverse. Realism, which uh, which uh, uh, needs to is needed to cause psychological and emotional immersion. It can be low fidelity because uh, things like Minecraft, uh, games like Minecraft or even uh, Roblox have very low fidelity, but people can still get uh, psychologically and emotionally immersed in that. The other uh, feature is ubiquity. Um, there are two types of ubiquity. One is, of course, the fact that you can accessible, you can access the um, metaverse from any existing digital device. But uh, later on, Matthew Ball claims that only uh, 3D virtual reality will suffice. Ubiquity um, through the use of virtual identities. Uh, I mean, the virtual identities remain intact. So ubiquity is two types. One is, of course, that whenever you enter the game or enter any uh, portion of the metaverse, then it is as if, uh, you know, your state is preserved. Like if, you, if your avatar is wearing certain clothes or you have certain badges, then they will uh, resurrect and be available to you. The other is accessibility, of course. Accessibility is a tough, tougher uh, thing because you need some kind of a device as opposed to the real world where you do not need any device. You're already in it. Well, you need uh, perception, visual, auditory, touch, perception, but most people have it. Uh, there are some people who are uh, deprived of one or more of those senses. For them, uh, the world is uh, still the world. Uh, the third item, interoperability, is uh, shown as a separate item, but actually the, it, it, will, it will feed ubiquity and um, make it possible um, for the collective persona and the virtual identity to uh, cross boundaries. That means go from game to game uh, or from world to world without uh, having to do too much to bring um, your assets with you or your persona or your um, specific uh, you know, avatar. And uh, scalability, of course, uh, it uh, implies that you, you have to be able to be present in these worlds along with uh, an unlimited number of people. And the game, should not, uh, game or the world should not suffer. These are high bars, um, which implies that there is no metaverse. The metaverse doesn't exist today. Okay. Um, then there is a whole bunch of uh, uh, definitions from the World Economic Forum, which has its own um, sort of a working group, uh, which uh, you can link to from this uh, from this. Uh, WEF, um, you know, it's a, it's a hyperlink. 
and um, the EU has published a paper. But what seems to be constant is the persistence, interconnection, and immersion. And now we see more of the virtual 3D world as being uh, necessary. So Matthew Ball, of course, um, creates more characteristics, which are something like to be experienced synchronously. Obviously, for any world to mirror reality, it has to be experienced synchronously, meaning there can't be too much lag between your action and the um, result of your action in such a world. But what is interesting is, and the con continuity of data such as identity, history, entitlements, objects, communications, and payments. But what is not mentioned here is the fact that identity is what drives all of that other stuff. In fact, identity is what drives um, interoperability, ubiquity, and I already mentioned these. Um, so another way of looking at it is that by, by negating, which is of course a, um, my comment there on top, neti neti is a uh, reference to Advaita, where uh, the Atman, the uh, universal soul, is not, uh, you know, there is a method of inquiry by which you approach it uh, by denying, by negating what it's not, what it, what it is, right? So in that same spirit, Matibala said that it's not a virtual world, it's not a virtual space, it's not virtual reality, it is not a digital and virtual economy, um, it is not a game, it is not a virtual theme park or Disneyland, it is not a new app store, and it's not a new UGC platform. Um, user, um, I think it is user generated content. Uh, user generated what? content. So it's any yeah, content. user generated content, which means you you you're not only paying uh, the game uh, uh, the ho hoster of the game, but you also get paid if your content becomes popular. Uh, thank you, Sandy, and. So there are two visions of this, uh, which is, you know, um, augmented reality, which is obviously uh, like a Google Glass or like a HoloLens. You're looking at the real world, but it, something is overlaid on top of it, which gives you much more information. So in a certain sense, it is the real world uh, viewed through certain type of glasses. And I'm sure that there are ways in which you can disappear entirely into a virtual world where, you know, the virtual reality uh, world of Facebook, Facebook's uh, main uh, acquisition, uh, which basically blinds you to the real world. You're strapped in and you cannot interact with um, the real world. Of course, there are hybrids. Um, Matthew Ball did, does say that it has to be virtual reality, not just augmented reality to cause the metaverse. And uh, notice that Gartner has come up with this uh, whole slew of things that are the elements of a metaverse, of a metaverse, right? But if you look at the elements, digital currency, marketing, digital commerce, non-fungible token, infrastructure, that, that sounds 
like a cop out. I mean, it's, you know, infrastructure is just one of those words which can be used in any context. Device independence, gaming, digital assets, uh, social and entertainment events, online shopping, workplace, social media, digital humans, NLP. But if you look at it, most of these items require some notion of identity. Some of them are stronger notions of identity than others. Um, yeah, uh, Bobby, I'm going to come to that where I'm going to talk about all the different uh, so-called meta futures that are waiting for us. Uh, so this is just Gardner's view. And I only took it because it seemed like an enumeration of all the things that we've just seen right here. Um, so this is, of course, um, contains the first uh, element, which is, uh, sorry, I have to go back. These are the, we are taking baby steps in these areas. Education, where um, virtual classrooms, which have been such a nasty thing during the pandemic, using Zoom, uh, where uh, interaction between the participants is very limited, of course, limited to chat, limited to um, not a presence, um, you know, rich environment. So education has also gone up in cost by huge amounts. If you're talking about inflation, education has been inflated by uh, around 1,200% since um, uh, probably um, the early 2010s. Uh, medicine is another category, healthcare, that has inflated. So in order to bring costs under control, the people have started using things like telemedicine. And AEC, architecture, engineering and construction, uh, is another area because you can do simulations of uh, actual uh, of of the buildings and then use the feedback of people's experience or the actual fact of um, being exposed to the real world uh, in a sense uh, if you take planet labs data and start modeling uh, extreme events in the past, how will it affect the uh, proposed construction? The other is real estate, meaning selling real estate. You can actually place the buyer, I mean the seller into the, I mean, sorry, the buyer into the um, actual building and uh, have them walk around. These are all available today, but very small steps. Industry, of course, when we talk about industry, we, we're talking about construction of factories, uh, you know, and, or even items like modeling and air, um, well, creating a virtual model of an airport. I think the Hong Kong airport has created one where you can walk around and experience the airport as it is at that time. In addition, uh, the logistical uh, uh, constructs, like for example, whether you can pull up with a truck to, to unload, 
to ship your goods and so on can also be looked at uh, in this uh, virtual airport. Um, the other is, of course, lifestyle, with, which in includes exercise. Uh, Peloton has some limited virtual reality where you're led um, in your exercise by a avatar of an instructor and you're participating along with hundreds of other people who are doing the same uh, same exercise everywhere. Dating, um, dating sites, of course, uh, and also experiences like, you know, you can go have a date in Paris on the banks of the Seine or something like that. Weddings, of course, have already taken place in the metaverse and sex work, which nobody wants to talk about, but which will get a lot of uh, attention in the metaverse, especially if it includes, uh, if it includes uh, feedback, haptic feedback and so on. Entertainment, uh, including sports, gambling, and events uh, of all kinds, like uh, concerts, presentations, fashion, of course, that allows you to wear the clothes you're about to buy on your avatar. And if your avatar is a pretty good representation of your body and so on, then you'll be able to see how you look in it. Advertising, of course, and governance, which is a strange thing to put in here, but this is by no means a, an, exclu uh, an uh, uh, exhaustive list. Uh, governance, uh, strangely enough, um, some of these, uh, I think a parliament, uh, uh, the Turkish parliament is going to create a virtual space where the where the legislators can come together. Uh, of course, it will have presence, more presence than is today. And they claim it's going to happen in 2023. And uh, the South Koreans have a metaverse uh, initiative with the, more than 400 companies in it. And they are also talking about creating ways in which um, the there can be meetings of companies, virtual, uh, you know, virtual meetings and so on. Um, so we have been talking about the metaverse versus a metaverse. If you noticed, the Gartner things said a metaverse. According to Ball, according to many others, according to even the 2013 paper, uh, we are going to have the metaverse, which is similar to the internet. We don't talk about internets. We don't talk about, we probably talk about intranet, multiple intranets getting connected or smaller um, networks being connected, but it is never called the internet. Similarly, the metaverse, is going to be uh, is going to be not just confined to one thing, but includes everything that's out there. This is only possible, of course, if uh, true interoperability has arrived and encompasses all possible virtual worlds with seamless transitions. There is a lack of a metaverse protocol. There are some limited uh, protocols to do data transfer across uh, multiple world, worlds. Um, this is uh, based on standards and uh, of course derived from Pixar's USD, Universal Scene Descriptor. The other standards 
that are going to be there and other rails that are ma going to make this possible is some form of uh, transition of identity from one world to another or uh, um, transportation or interoperability of identity, which uh, nobody really talks about. I mean, they uh, do a lot of hand waving over it. Uh, of course, the early papers talk about what is there today, which is OpenID Connect, uh, not today, but in 2013. Uh, Open ID Connect, uh, you know, those kind of uh, technologies that were popular. And even Matthew Ball's book does not go into that in detail, although uh, he does say that the metaverse is not here yet. But he is very optimistic about it. Uh, he hardly ever mentions identity standards like SSI or um, the GID protocol um, or the GID standard, which has been accepted uh, uh, as a standard today. And it's very important that we um, see how the metaverses can become the metaverse only through um, proper identity standards because almost everything that they talk about controlling interoperability has to have some kind of a notion of identity across multiple uh, silos. So today, the identity in the real world, we know that it, it is interoperable to a certain extent, except when you interact with uh, digital um, uh, digital platforms. Uh, it's still kind of creaky. Uh, but when I interact with my neighbor, with I, when I interact with the people in my neighborhood, uh, where the physical embodiment um, is what identifies me in a certain way. But when I say identity is an edge product protocol, it is not just a collection of attributes. It's a collection of relationships uh, with uh, various organizations, uh, with, well, maybe the physical embodiment is uh, much more collection of attributes, but even there, it uh, they keep changing. Some of them keep changing, not all of them, and some of them are invariant, and that's what um, you know. That's why we used we use some of them for bootstrapping our identity in certain in a certain way. Uh, Genesis is the birth certificate key documents, you know. So passport is a very interesting uh, standard. There are passport standards, which allow you basically to go from country to country, which can be con uh, compared to the metaverses, but um, the standards uh, indicate what elements have to be in a passport and how they are to be presented. So it's basically a data interchange standard. Um, and driver's license similarly as an international driver's license. Um, then we also rely on a whole bunch of uh, identifiers. And then of course, uh, we have uh, our own the way we exist, like books, poetry, music, art, or movies that we like or that we produce, the, the food that we cook or eat, the memorabilia that we strongly associate with ourselves, some special objects that we carry around with us sometimes. For example, I always, almost always wear a hat, um, you know, that is one of my um, extensions 
right? My manifestation in the real world. It's not an avatar. Um, so what is needed to build the metaverse? And that is deliberate misspelling, of course. Um, we have, uh, according to Matthew's book and other books, other literature, it is a, um, it's built on various things. For examples, uh, for example, networks. Synchrony is not a um, feature of networks. In fact, the basic protocols are not synchronous at all. Uh, so just to insist on synchrony as a uh, feature of the metaverse, you have to have a way to simulate synchrony. That means you cannot have too much latency in the interaction, which of course um, implies uh, sufficient bandwidth, especially if the worlds that uh, we are viewing at the edge are uh, rich. And then uh, goes into the devices, uh, different kinds of the primary device, of course, is the 3D, uh, uh, you know, either the VR or the AR headset. You can also include mobile phones in it, I think. Secondary is everything that helps us uh, to interact, including laptops, computers, and so on. Tertiary is IOTs and other peripheral uh, computing platforms, devices that we own or devices that we have access to. Computing is a big thing because when you have bandwidth problems, the usual solution is uh, to try to generate a lot of stuff on the edge instead of sending it all over. Um, and then you have the apps versus browser situation. But I think those are all going to disappear with the arrival of the true metaverse. Uh, the virtual world engines, uh, you know, that's the other part that's needed to build the metaverse. Uh, then interoperability, when I say shades off, what I mean is uh, it is a spectrum. True interoperability is a holy grail and we are always uh, going towards it. And payment rails, of course, uh, built on blockchain maybe, uh, but today there are so many gatekeepers and they are going to be a real threat Apple, for example, uh, takes 30% of the cut. Uh, Steam, um, Steamworks uh, takes 30 or 40%. I don't know where they came up with 30 or 40% of the cut, which is a lot, uh, which means that lesser amounts are available to the other participants who are actually building the stuff that goes into the metaverse. And of course, the identity part, I kept for last, but it's stuff that uh, powers everything. Um, I've just um, put that in, in a stack here. Uh, this may not be the right approach, but I think this is uh, this is what I've come up with, where identity, of course, is what enables uh, presence and what enables assets. Yes, Dan. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, good stuff. Uh, 
and I see uh, Jessica's online. Uh, I, it, it, Accenture's all in on this uh, metaverse stuff. Um, I call it meta curse. But uh, when when I yeah, you probably to look right. At, uh, metaverse. I I I say that it's a fancy user interface uh, to enable access to one or more online applications. That's what I think of all this hype around the metaverse. It's a fancy user interface to access one or more online applications. So where does identity fit into that? Sure. Well, identity even today, when I go to uh, access an online um, uh, application, I use username and password. Oh, I want to access one or more applications, so I could do federated identity. I could use my Google I, um, identity to access one or more applications. Okay, throw a fancy user interface because I have, uh, you know, an avatar. I have some virtual space. All right, fine. But that's identity to me. This is uh, uh, identity and access management on steroids. That's the metaverse to me in terms of identity. Now, where does decentralized or SSI um, fit into okay, that? Uh, I, let, oh, me, yeah. let me uh, let me let me let me stop you sure, there yeah. because I'm going to go through what I have, and you'll say that I uh, you'll see how I have suggested something, and then at okay, the sure, end sorry, there's a Q and A, uh, and you can. Uh, uh, you know, you can raise these points. I, I, I take your point, but I don't agree with you, right? Because fair, fair uh, presence of multiple people in a world is not a fancy user interface. Multiple people and their actions affect me, my actions affect them. That, and in real time, that is not... I mean, yes, you can call it, everything is a user interface. Even my existence in this world can be called a user interface to the world. Without my perceptions, I'm lost. Uh, so in a sense, yes. But, uh, you know, anyway, we'll, uh, we'll go into that in a little more detail in the coming uh, slides. So right now, the identity part is supported by, uh, the imperatives of KYC and payments and through uh, certain platforms, which are used everywhere. Like for example, I, Unreal, Unity, Helios, Teamworks, and uh, virtual world platforms um, that are built on top of these. And they are attached to your assets can be held by an intermediary. I don't know about that, but definitely Apple Store is a big block to the whole thing uh, because of the 30%, uh, which they, you know, they cannot be disintermediated. Uh, what they have is a closed system with the iOS and uh, App Store itself is a closed system. There was a whole, um, Slowly, you know, there was a whole court case against them by Epic Games. Um, there was also, uh, you know, lots of activity in the uh, in the EU. That is probably going to come after them for um, platform abuse. I mean, platform abuse is quite common because of the growth of mega growth of these platforms uh, that have a lot of influence and hence it becomes a total monopoly and you cannot get away from them. Uh, you know, the other one is Amazon. Um, and the risk for identity in the, in the metaverse is the same as in the real world. You can have an identity theft, uh, unwanted attention, predatory behavior, uh, blo blocked identity. That means like, you know, I'm on uh, Apple. Apple knows who I am, but they will not share it. Even with the consent, I think uh, they block you from sharing too many things. Uh, then the avatar integrity um, and identity of operator and controller 
sometimes is unknown. Like you are on some site and you don't know who who's actually controlling this. Uh, so here comes the SSI and the metaverse, where I am proposing that we could have the same three-legged stool, uh, the um, holder, the verifier, and the issuer. I haven't drawn the other part, which is I could have uh, issuance in the non-metaverse world, and then I can share those credentials with the uh, with a smaller. So here, M prime and M double prime are virtual worlds inside the metaverse. That, that's how I, I, I see it. Uh, and already the SSI stuff has already solved some of these problems, but I don't hear anybody in the metaverse world talking about this. Uh, maybe because they're not familiar with this, maybe because they're all gamers and they come from, you know, a place where they have bought stuff and they, they don't want to uh, think about it too much. So here, now uh, we can talk about this uh, properly. I hope you guys found it uh, interesting at least. Uh, I mean, I, I'm sorry that I didn't go too much into the identity thing, but the main uh, idea there was that identity, without identity, the metaverse is not possible, basically, right? Um, anyway, so if anybody else, uh, Dan, if you want to continue your... Uh, Uh, no, thanks. Thanks a lot, Jip. And it's, it's fine. No, all I was going to say with, um, you know, INAM, where SSI comes in is, you know, you have your attributes within your wallet that you can selectively disclose in a secure, um, you know, uh, fashion um, above and beyond the, the INAM stuff. But I get your point that, you know, you, you know, uh, and, and other differences, the real time nature of your interactions uh, uh, affecting other people. But again, it's this, um, uh, yeah, it complicates it for sure. But um, it's same basic, your identity is still, um, uh, uh, those identity attributes are still the, 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 basically the same. You know, once you're uh, author, you know, authenticated and authorized. Uh, for some activity or some access, um, yeah, that's what remains the same in my mind. Well, there is a, there is an ad additional uh, um, um, additional problem uh, in the metaverse, which is basically if you have an avatar, uh, it is not just a it's not just a presentation of a image but it's a moving, uh, walking 3D uh, figure. In addition, the avatar has all these accoutrements. Uh, you know, you could have, I mean, in the gaming situation, you get badges, you get all these other stuff. So they are all sort of assets. So they can be present, uh, they can be said to be data and you can, transport that data across multiple metaverses. And if, if it's possible, you know, I think there is a, going to be a lot of resistance against that because you don't want, a Fortnite is not going to want uh, stuff from uh, Roblox. Um, you know, Minecraft is not going to take well to um, having stuff from uh, Fortnite, you know, those kind of things. But there is a whole spectrum of uh, believability or presence. Um, for me, you know, my, my, my son plays, used to play uh, Minecraft and I could not 
get into that because the fidelity was very low, but he, he was accepting of it. And I can see why. Um, so even the so-called presence or the, or the reality of, of whatever you're experiencing uh, could be, go all the way from lo-fi, you know, to very detailed renderings. And when you transport that across a couple of platforms, how do you deal with it? Um, so what I want to ask, um, for example, Sandy, who's um, been in this, uh, you know, he's a, He's in the media and entertainment SIG and he leads the subgroup dealing with gaming. So I wanted to ask him, is it just a fancy UI? <laughs> hey, Vivian, thank you. Uh, so, no, that's obviously a loaded question. Uh, uh, like you said, I think this, uh, at, at the the most basic level, yes, we can basically think about the metaverse, uh, whatever that shit, like, like, I mean, the same thing where like, uh, th there's no definition which can be 100% clear right now. It's something which is still evolving. Nobody knows exactly what shape it's gonna end up taking. Uh, but I do agree that it's generally speaking is the metaverse, not it's not like many metaverses, uh, you know, whatever that shape that ends up taking. And, and generally speaking, the idea is that uh, it's, it's an ever presence virtual and uh, augmented world. And, and it could be thought about as a really fancy application where you can have multiple, uh, you know, basically literally uh, like, like in, in a way like an MMO RPG as we call them in the gaming side, which is a massively multiple online role-playing games. Uh, so that could be a manifest manifestation of that, or it could be like, like you said correctly, is is adds in much more levels levels of complexity because it's not just a simple game. Then it's actually multiple people in multiple communities interacting with each other, and everybody's actions having some sort of an impact on somebody else, and also on the environment itself. And identity obviously is going to sit in the center of that because uh, you know you you take one uh, ecosystem and and even if you take multiple virtual worlds. Uh, you can actually have multiple avatars within uh, different virtual worlds. So then identity becomes even more complex because it could be just you, but playing two or 10 different people in, in the metaverse. So how do you tie all that together? That's where identity is gonna become even much more complex. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree that, you know, I could be a, um a uh, tribal woman in one world and um, another one could be, you know, as myself, like the sort of a representation of my own self, like in the GitHub uh, avatar. But anyway, um, looks like uh, Bobby is um, put in a, um, chat that Ledger Academy has several education-based metaverses. Yes, um, Vipin. Uh, and... we've been, I've been working with a private metaverse company that is, again, trying to be interoperable based on Unity um, as the backbone. And it is for, um, for me, I set up different schools or different classes. So I have one on, um, employment in the blockchain arena. Um, and I have Ledger Academy, which does all the Hyperledger classes and just general information about blockchain. Um, and they're open all the time. And these are different than the general metaverses, although they're built on the same interoperable platform. They're just um, private and accessed with a code. So like, for instance, if you want to go to the Ledger Academy school, you would have to go get the code off my website and then enter the metaverse that way. So instead of them being proximity next to another uh, piece of property, it's purpose-driven where you go directly in for that meeting, that art show, that class, or whatever your purpose is. 
But let me ask you a question. Suppose I get a certificate. Can I then take that certificate and go outside to another um, site, let's say, where uh, there's a job fair, a virtual job fair? And can I present that certificate there? Um, the technology is there, yes. So what would happen is most likely, and again, this is what I'm seeing the um, pa the pattern is, is that you would earn a certificate and it would most likely be able to be shown up on your LinkedIn profile. So that no matter where you go, um, that certificate is part of, and then if it's in like a, in the NFT form, it could be a certificate that sits in your wallet. Again, ID in the metaverse right now is wallet driven more than individual driven. Like it doesn't matter who you know, what your passport is or your KYC, it, if you can attach to the wallet that has that avatar, that piece of land or that, you know, clothing that you want to wear, um, you can use it. If you can't attach to that wallet, it's not accessible to you in the metaverse. Same thing with NFTs. If you have an NFT that's compatible with the metaverse, you have to access that wallet in the metaverse in order to play with that NFT or that avatar. Okay. I mean, thank so, you. this is very, very helpful. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> you know, it was kind of an educational journey for me. Uh, although I am very familiar with a lot of the, uh, the plumbing, but it's when I raise my head above that and go slightly higher, then I can see the landscape for what it is it's extremely complicated and uh, definitely not there yet uh, you know in terms of the metaverse and uh, the only way we're going to get there or get closer let's say is by adopting things like ssi uh, which can are no longer in the control of individual organizations and gatekeepers. So we choose what to put in the wallet issued by somebody who, you know, we interact with and we prove uh, either our identity or some other aspect of our identity, like I'm an expert in, you know, Malayalam language. I don't know, some some other things that can then be transported and gain you admittance. Um, so yeah, Alfonso has also put in a comment and I think we're coming to the end of this session. We already passed one o'clock in uh, New York. So I hope it was helpful. Hey, thank thanks, you. thanks, Ben. Thanks very much. It was very helpful. Uh, yep. Thanks. Thank you, Dan, for uh, bringing in uh, your viewpoint. Yeah. Yeah. No, I think we're going to all be discussing this uh, in depth uh, quite often. Uh, you know, and um, yeah, um, interesting times we live in. <laughs> well, isn't that a Chinese curse? Yeah. May you live in interesting times. Yeah. <laughs> You're right. You're right. <laughs> well, thankfully, we don't ascribe to that. So it's a good thing. Very good. All Thank right. You, Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.